Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Tom Worth Jr. And today I wanted to talk about uh, reasoning with Trump voters. Uh, I've talked about how to talk to them before. Uh, that was more along the lines of keeping it civil um, or, or possibly <laughs> not engaging at all. Uh, but if, if you do actually want to reason uh, with someone from the other side, how might you go about that? Because uh, their their information sources are limited is the first problem. The second and possibly bigger problem is they don't realize it. Um, they, they think they're getting the full picture and they're not. Um, so to to steal myself against against them, uh, against uh, talking points, uh, I Sometimes we'll go in, uh, like when I know I'm going to be hanging out with someone, I might get my facts straight. I might kind of brush up on some things. Um, and, and I don't always have to do this intentionally, but but sometimes I might um, because I know it's coming. Uh, the, the talking points don't really change that much. Uh, and this is a difference between uh, today's Republicans and today's Democrats. You know what... You know, the, yesterday I was talking about the lies uh, with Vance and with Trump and how the, the Democrats are at a real disadvantage there because Kamala Harris and Tim Walls are trying to stick to facts. And and, and that's their, that's kind of a limited set of facts that they stick to, uh, whereas Trump and Vance can, can lie about anything and they can lie about it in any way. And the universe of things they will lie about is, is too much to prepare for. Uh, in their debates, say, um, or on the campaign trail. But the talk, the talking points, the Fox talking points um, specifically uh, are, are not that wide ranging. They're, they're always the same. Um, so it's kind of easier to stay abreast of things. And some things that, you know, some storm clouds are forming here in October. And October, traditionally a month where you know, bad things can happen. You have wars starting in October, especially in the Middle East. You have stock market crashes. Uh, some of the some of the worst stock market days in history have fallen in October's. It's just a, an unsettled month historically, and and that is definitely the case uh, for for this October, which we're a few days into now. Um, the strike, for instance, the longshoreman strike. That's if you follow business or economic news, you've known this is coming for a little while now. It, it didn't just appear on the doorstep um, here here on October 1st. It, it's been a, a little while in the making. Companies fortunately have had time to prepare for this. Just just like we knew it was coming, companies knew it was coming. And so they could uh, set aside supplies. They could order extra stuff and maybe Maybe it got shipped here from overseas. Um, that's one thing that, uh, that that's a bad thing. Uh, Israel is a bad, it's a bad uh, situation over there. The hurricane um, in, in North Carolina and Georgia, that those are, that's a terrible situation. These are things that are beyond anyone's control. So <laughs> I did put on Fox News this morning before I sat in front of the camera. I did this when I was... Uh, drinking some coffee. I had it on a good, I, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes, maybe a little more. And I mean, this is not something <laughs> I, I typically do. I just, I can't, I honestly cannot stand it. Um, I can't stand the people on it. I can't stand their presentation. I, I can't, I, I just, it was a a labor of love for all of you uh, that I subjected myself to this. And right out of the gate, they're talking to a guy at, at, uh, at a port. And it's this older dude, some small business owner. And <laughs> of course, the business owner they choose is a guy that's making guns. Because, you know, this is Fox News. We've got to get something. We're not going to get someone making uh, whatever <laughs> normal thing. This guy's making guns, but not just normal guns. They're making fake guns, but fake guns, in the words of the owner, uh, that look 
just like real guns and anyone would actually be completely convinced that it's a real gun except it's not it, it you can't load it you can't fire it it's not an actual gun but it's made to look uh, exactly like a gun and i was sitting there thinking why on earth <laughs> But you want people walking around with things that look like real guns, and they aren't. Um, and But the Fox News host goes, oh, for self-defense, right? And uh, the guy said, well, that that's something you could use it for, yeah. <sighs> okay, we'll get past that. Um, so he starts talking about the strike. And right off the bat, it's... Hey, because uh, you you might wonder, right? This is this is an American businessman. He's making guns. He's Fox News. He's got to be made in USA, right? I mean, why why would this shipping strike even affect him? He's he's all American. I love America. I I want tariffs. I want I don't want anything from anywhere else, right? Isn't that isn't that the America first line? Well, this guy says. Well, of course, we realized how uh, vulnerable we were with the international supply chain back during COVID. So, so back in in 2020, we started trying to get to where this is all U.S. sourced and all made in America. But we've only had four years to do this, so so we're not quite there yet. So we do have critical parts coming in from over. He didn't specifically say China, but. You know the the two big shipping lines, uh, Maersk out of is a Danish company, and Costco, not Costco with a T, but Costco is a, a Chinese government uh, company, uh, own supported whatever company. These these are the two companies that the longshoremen are striking against, and these companies are wildly profitable. They are not. You might think, well, maybe shipping, we're just scraping by here. Uh, maybe the profit margins are razor thin. They are not. They are huge. They're, there's not a lot of competition that the the shipping container companies, shipping companies, I mean, they are huge. They're massive scale and you can't compete with them. So they could charge what they want. And, and these workers are not making enough. I read that, I believe it said from 2018 through 2024, that's six years, they have had a $1 an hour increase. So I, I don't know how much they're making, but whatever they're making, a dollar a, a dollar an hour comes out to two thousand bucks a year. So they've had apparently two one two thousand dollar a year raise over the last six years. So think about how up in arms you get about your paltry raises at work. I imagine doing that for six years. Um, so. So these people need more money um, and they're striking. And why can they strike? They can strike because they're organized labor, right? They, it's collective bargaining with these shipping companies. Um, a lot of these people are going to vote for Trump. And this guy, this small business owner, um, after railing on this, how much it's gonna hurt his business or whatever, he keeps looking off to the side like like you'd see the hostage videos or the looking off their cue cards to see what they're supposed to say. He's doing this and it's very unnerving to me the whole time. Like, what is, what is he looking at? Um, because he's sounding pretty well spoken. So I'm pretty sure he has his talking points um, off camera. Uh, because they picked this guy, they, they will talk to him ahead of time. They will tell him what to talk about. And he immediately goes to, I don't know why this administration isn't doing more. I don't know why the government refuses to step in. Now, then, then they go to a, a clip of uh, Biden saying he's not going to step in. It's it's a dispute between a company and organized labor. That's not for the government to get into. And when you think of the irony, this is what I talk about. This this current incarnation of the Republican Party is not what it used to be. They are crying for the government to step in. It's like, you want small government. You don't even want government. You don't want government regulation. You don't want organized labor. You don't want anything. So why why are you crying for the government to step in? Why? I, I don't know. Um, why aren't you mad at the shipping companies for not paying their employees more? They're, they're the ones who aren't paying a fair wage. Um, I don't, I don't know. That, that's a whole different rant. But 
But that, so, so that's the thing. Immediately goes to why isn't the government doing more and then the Biden clip saying they're not going to step in. And they can't, they shouldn't step in. They have no business stepping into this dispute. Um, then they go to uh, another major crisis right now, uh, the hurricane and the flooding in North Carolina. And they have this other lady on there, also a small business owner. And this is where I say, you have to you have to have facts straight. You have to have facts at your disposal because you are going to hear this. If you hang out with any Republican, this is what they will say. They will say they've lost everything. The government isn't there. Where's FEMA? And she said, FEMA hasn't dispersed any funds yet. And she said it matter of factly, like she works for FEMA or something. And and the Fox News host knows differently. And, and how do I know he knows differently? Because I know differently. I woke up this morning and my little news feed on my little Google Home, which is like a couple quick headlines when I wake up, the, the top one was about the hurricane and Helene and, and the devastation. And it said, <laughs> it was a Reuters uh, clip, and it said, many people are claiming that FEMA isn't dispersing any funds. So far, FEMA has already dispersed over $10 million in relief for that hurricane. That's already happened. And, and, and that was as of, you know, like six o'clock this morning when I heard this report. But this woman is on there and she is saying as fact, to every single person watching Fox News today that FEMA hasn't dispersed a dime yet and the host is just going like he like that's true like he knows that this is true and it's a freaking lie and they're they are they are willfully <laughs> disseminating propaganda lies so I'm like maybe I'm not 10 minutes into it at this point I'm, I'm more than five minutes and then they move on to the debate from two nights ago and two days ago and 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 I, as I said in my video yesterday JD Vance is a hero to the Republicans now they thought he couldn't get it done they were all questioning why Trump picked him and now it's like he owns the party or something like he's the smartest guy they've ever come across and, and it may be um, we all know better we all know facts we all know the lies they don't and and he comes out to a hero's welcome at his campaign stop and they immediately fox news starts attacking tim walls in the china thing which i said yesterday look he should have just said i said this in comments i don't remember if i said it in the video or not but i think i did he should have just said look i had my dates wrong i was over there at the time I misspoke and then moved on. I even saw Carl Rove say that today on Fox News because they had him on later. Um, that he should, and he said, look, the guy just misspoke. It happens. How he handled his misspeaking was completely wrong, trying to just talk around it and make up a bunch of stuff. But he should have just said he misspoke and moved on and it's a long time ago. The American people would have been fine with that. And that's, that's what I think also. It scares me that I think like Carl Rove. But um, I'm telling you, I know how these people think. I know how they think. Um, and it sucks. Because um, it's really hard to go against. Um, it's, it's hard to combat. And I'm trying to tell you how to do that. And it is through facts. So when uh, they, they go with the Tim Walls thing and the, the being in China, then the Fox News host comes back with uh, that they're the House GOP is launching in, he doesn't say the House GOP, he says Congress, like to give it more, more credibility, more weight. He says Congress has launched an investigation into Tim Walz's dealings with China, who paid for it, how many times he went there, who he met with, what he was doing over there. We all know he was there on education <laughs> trips. He was a school teacher. Harvard helped underwrite this. This is not some conspiracy. This is not some secretive thing. This is known by, by anyone who wouldn't choose to know things. And Fox News is, is looking at the, the House GOP nuts and, and the stuff that they're trying to create and lie and make up. And they're, they're making it seem like it's a, a legitimate actual thing they're doing. But I, again, the host will know the story. He has to. And he just goes right along with what, what the GOP Congress is doing. 
Um, so then they go to finally Trump. I'm nearing the end of the 10 to 15 minutes on Fox here. Uh, they go on to Trump. He's got a, a campaign stop in Michigan and they go on about how, um, you know, there's a lot of Arab people in Michigan. It's, it's a big, it's a bigger influence in Michigan, the Arab population than in, than it would be in any other state. Um, and Michigan is a battleground and, 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 and they said the Arab, uh, vote is approaching 50, 50 between Trump and Kamala Harris. And this is something that the Democrats have a huge advantage, like, like 20 or more points typically. And, and this is all due to the Israel Palestine thing. And you have an Arab population in Michigan who is disgusted with with what Israel is doing to Palestinians. And say what you will, Israel has every right to defend themselves and root out the terrorists, and, and I get all of that. But also, they are pounding <laughs> the West Bank and Gaza into the Stone Age, and it is not going to stop. And, and I shudder to think about four days from now on the one year anniversary of uh, the Hamas slaughter. Um, I'm not crying here, I'm just rubbing my eyes. Um, I don't know what Netanyahu has in store, but I, I don't wanna find out um, because I, I think it's gonna be terrible, whatever happens. Um, he he is a huge Trump supporter, they're, they're buddies. They're both criminals, like Trump, he has all sorts of criminal charges that are just waiting for him to not be in office anymore so so their justice process can play out as it needs to and he he is clinging to power in every way he can him and trump are are good buddies he's doing everything he can to get trump elected because it gives him great comfort to have a criminal in the white house I'll just right there with him and he does not want uh kamala harris to win and he is trying to escalate at every possible turn, he's trying to provoke Iran more and more and more. And I think he's surprised that Iran is not doing anything. <laughs> they, they launched their missile strike. It didn't really do anything other than give Netanyahu more, more ammo to, to strike back even harder now against Iran. Um, it's playing right into Trump's hands and there, there's nothing Biden can do about it. Biden can't make Netanyahu stop. He can't. Um, and and that's what the Palestinian uh, supporters in Michigan and the rest of the U.S. are upset about because they expect Biden and the Democrats to somehow uh, use their influence to, to not support Israel. And I'm sorry, that's just not going to happen. We will never not support Israel. Um, and you have a guy over there in charge of everything who is a huge Trump uh, ally. So... I will just say, uh, Arab population of America, if you think Trump <laughs> will help Palestinians more than a Democrat would, just, just ch check yourself. It's not any more than Trump will help union workers more than a Democrat would. A lot of these longshoremen will vote for Trump, but if they didn't have a Democrat, if, like, if they had no organized labor ability, um, then it would just, these companies would be paying bottom dollar to them. And you'd very quickly have <laughs> poverty levels being reached for a lot of these people who can't make a living wage and it would harm the communities and, and people are just very short-sighted and they don't see that and they will vote for Trump. Um, so, so the facts you need to keep in mind are for the hurricane, as of today, FEMA's already distributed over $10 million there. Uh, oh, one more thing on that lady uh, who was talking about the hurricanes, her solution to all this. Well, Congress just needs to, since FEMA's not doing anything, Congress just needs to pass a bill and, and uh, get us a bunch of aid. <laughs> this is how uninformed she is. And again, the host is like, yeah. Yeah, Congress needs to do something. Well, they can't do anything. They won't do anything. If you think this Republican uh, House is going to pass any any aid on your part, even if they would, how do they have to distribute it? 
FEMA, right? <laughs> FEMA has the money. They're working night and day. They are getting it distributed. It's never going to be fast enough. So it's, I, I, anyway, you have, you have all that. Um, uh, know that uh, Biden is staying out of the strike because he has to, because he should. Uh, the Democrats are why we have organized labor unions for, for these, these dock workers to even make the money they have. Um, Democrats are, are friends of Palestinians more than Republicans are if you are uh, an Arab voter in Michigan or anywhere else. Um, there's, just, <laughs> there's just a lot. Uh, and the final point was with the Trump rally in Michigan, uh, the the person on site was saying, uh, yeah, so uh, so we'll hear directly from Trump on these things later today. And then the Fox host goes, yeah, we'll be watching. <laughs> Did I do that? Of course they will, but they're not they're not learning things and they're not being journalists. They're just watching Trump rallies and Vance rallies and. Uh, and that's what you have to prepare your against, yourself against. Um, when you're trying to reason with Trump voters, you have to understand their limited uh, fact set. Uh, and you have to be able to counter that. Fortunately, it is not a large universe of, uh, of misinformation that they deal in. It's very specific subjects. I, I knew what it was going to be about. And that's exactly what it was about. Um, so hopefully you can engage in that fight over the next four weeks and five days. Uh, I guess that's it. Uh, that's it for today. Um, we'll talk to you later.